Hello there, and thank you for watching this edition of Your City in Five. I'm Ricky Saias. I'm here with my buddies at the city's animal services shelter. Now, these guys are looking for love in all the right places. Now, you can help by adopting them and giving them a forever home. Your City in Five correspondent Ramon Herrera takes a look at the shelter and the big steps it's made in the last few months. These are the friendly faces that the Animal Services Department is working hard to save. Their recent life-saving efforts are part of a five-year plan to increase the live release rate of shelter animals to 90% by the end of 2020. This plan was approved by City Council earlier this year. We've had a lot of successes. Um, council creating a new department of animal services, uh, 27 new positions over the next three years. So we're frantically hiring uh, 12 new folks to help us with some of our new programs for this first initial year. Um, also additional capital uh, requirements that are needed to make this facility a high volume adoption facility. And these efforts are having an impact. So far this calendar year, the live release rate is currently around 50% still a long work in progress and this won't happen overnight but we've gone from a 25 percent live release rate just three years ago to 34 percent two years ago to 43 percent last year and right now we're hovering around 50 percent live release rate it's a long way to go to 90 percent in 2020 uh, but we're on the right track and we're putting these programs in place to be able to better serve this community in el paso the Animal Services Shelter is open seven days a week to make it easy for you to adopt or to reconnect with a lost pet. To find out more about adoptions, visit epanimalservices.com. In Northeast El Paso, Ramon Herrera with your City in 5. In other city happenings, more bike lanes are rolling through the city of El Paso. City work crews are installing a new bike lane along Wrestler from Helen of Troy to Belvedere in both directions. There will be traffic lane closures along the stretch from 9 at night to 6 in the morning every day until the project is finished. The lanes will be at least 6 feet wide, intersection and travel lanes will be repainted, and there will be a bike box where cyclists can wait at an intersection. The bike lane project costs more than $300,000. It's expected to be finished by the end of this summer. The city is ready to unveil final design plans for the renovation of the Richard Burgess Library in Northeast El Paso. City Representative Carl Robinson and the Capital Improvement Department are inviting the public to attend a community meeting on Thursday, May 5th at the Northeast Police Substation on Dyer. Residents will get a chance to see renovation plans that include a large children's room, an area for teens, expanded computer and study labs, and the meeting room. Renovations will cost about $1.4 million, all paid for by the 2012 Quality of Life Bond Program. Quality of Life Bonds also paid for the renovation of the Irving Schwartz Library in East El Paso. Now the city officially reopened the popular neighborhood library with a ribbon cutting, music, and Today is the grand reopening of the Irving Schwartz Library. It's a special day. It's a library that I grew up in. Um, I just uh, lived down the corner uh, growing up as a little girl. And it's so exciting to see all of these great renovations and the much needed um, expansion of the library. It was a lot smaller. Yeah, take your books. We love it. Uh, we've been waiting for it for a very long time. Every time we pass by, it, we're like, is it open? Is it open? We love it. It's just what my kids and I have been waiting for. It's. Um, an experience, you know, to come and to actually experience books, other types of resources than just the internet, just the TV at home. Um, you have places where you can actually sit down and just not have an agenda, just come in and just to read. It's a heavily used library that a lot of families, um, young children, our senior citizens, families use. So it's, uh, they've been incredibly patient um, throughout uh, the renovations and so it's a, it's a very good day. A lot of them are incredibly happy. And then push done. I'm very excited about it. We've been waiting for it to open for a while. <laughs> good job. My son reads his own books. He's ahead of his class uh, reading and I think that gives them a, an additional advantage in the real world. I think that as a mom when you have lots of kids you're looking for good deals. The library's free, you can't get anything better than that. The first thing that people see, and I'm sure you all saw it, is when you walk in, you can't help but look up. She created these glass structures that illuminate with the sun, um, even at night with the moon. So it's absolutely gorgeous. You can't just help but look up. This is fantastic. You should come to the library. 
Thank you to your city and five photographers for that report. In other happenings, art sculptures made of used recycled tires are adding some flavor to a city building in the Mission Valley. The eye-catching sculptures have been placed at the Municipal Service Center on Sao Paulo. The Museums and Cultural Affairs Department worked with UTEP students who took recycled tires from the city's citizen collection stations and turned them into the incredible art. City Representative Peter Sforzwein and Representative Lily Limon worked together to bring the art pieces to the Mission Valley. We were able to create an experience for them from start to finish so that they really understand what it means not only to create, um, but to transport, to set up, to install, and to maintain the art. So they're doing a, 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 a full, full experiential um, exhibition here. It being the, one of the recycling centers here in town, it'd be more appropriate with the fact that this is recycled tires and stuff like that. And again, I think that it was important to sort of share the wealth. You know, we, we all have one city regardless of what district we may represent. There are a total of five art pieces they'll remain on display through this summer. The El Paso International Airport received some recognition for its service and friendly staff. A passenger survey done by the airport's Council International Air Service Quality ranked the airport number one in 25 out of 37 categories in overall satisfaction. The organization measures passenger satisfaction at airports across the country. El Paso's airport scored high on the survey that included courtesy and helpfulness of staff and the value of restaurant and shopping facilities. The airport has also landed a new website and logo. FlyElPaso.com has been refreshed. The site is sleek, it has new colors, it's more user-friendly and mobile-friendly. An improved logo that features a plane with a mountain backdrop is also displayed on the website. That's all the time we have for now, but I encourage you to come out here to the Animal Services Shelter. Come by and adopt this little guy or maybe a few of his buddies. And remember, you can find out more about our great city by visiting our website, ElPasoTexas.gov. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. For now, I'm Ricky Saias for Your City in 5.